Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night and that you'll enjoy the video and thank you so much for watching. What's that one thing in your house that's broken but you can't afford to fix it so it just sits there broken? Me? Well, I know how that's like. I had one of you that was broken in my home a while back and there is no fixing it. Once it's broke, it's broke. But how can that be? Are you not all strong and independent? What do you mean can't afford to fix it? Do you not all go to therapy to fix your emotional intelligence, emotional labor and all that? I thought I'm broken and I need to go to therapy to fix all my issues. I think I'm gonna let you make up your mind first and then I'm gonna still have to say no. I am not going to get sad the next time a boy breaks my heart and tells me he doesn't want to be with me. I'm just going to say, see you soon, buddy. See you soon, champ. Because they all come back. Every single one. 100% success rate has come crawling back to me. And... And what? I always thought that should be more after you say the word end, but I guess I was wrong. They all came back and I'm supposed to take your word for it? Is this one of those trust me or pinky promise moment or what? Since I know for sure they don't always come back, maybe if they all did, if all your exes came back, maybe that says more about you than about them. Men are hunters, yeah that's true. Men like the chase, that's also true. But what's also true is that every now and again we enjoy the easy stuff. Either way, if they all came back, I don't think that's something to be proud of. Men want to be treated like women. No, they want to be able to say that they've exploited you emotionally, physically, and financially at no expense of their own. It's about being able to brag to other men that they were able to have unfettered access to you at zero cost, zero effort, not even having to leave their bedroom, being able to brag about that performance of misogyny to all the other little boys who use that type of behavior as a way to establish their worth. Men want to be treated like women, said no man ever. Exploited you financially, that's why I'm paying all the bills and you're only dating men that make six figures. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And you should check on the definition of the word misogyny because I think you have no idea what it means. Exploited you physically, yeah, I can see that happening. But that's still not because of misogyny. Again, like I said earlier, sometimes we do enjoy the easy stuff. I'm gonna tell y'all what, one thing, that I will always live by is what one man won't do, another man will. And let me tell you why. There are too many men on this earth for me to sit around and deal with one motherfucker that don't want to act right. I have told men too many times in my life what I want to make me happy. I literally told them a million times before I left them. Don't do this. I need you to do more of that. Literally gave them a blueprint. And somehow they all managed to f*** it up still. Men get so mad that we call them stupid. But in reality, if they would just take a step back and listen and open their ears for once in their life, they would understand that the we call them stupid for, they deserve to be called stupid for. All I'm saying is I'm too pretty, I'm too good of a person, and my personality is too unmatched to beg a mother to open the door for me and buy me flowers. How are you not taking it? My personality is so amazing. That coming from a girl that just called an entire gender stupid. That coming from someone that thinks that entire gender was put on this her to provide her with happiness. I want, I deserve. No. No man cares what you want and no man cares what you think you deserve. And it's not those men that are stupid because of that. You on the other hand, Forrest Gump, you started your video with one man won't, another man will. Well, so far no man did. And that's because you think all men are stupid for not catering to your needs and that makes your personality equals to the one of a seahorse. And I think I've just insulted the seahorses. But well, at least they have a higher IQ than you. I am convinced that I have the worst ex out of them all. Out of them all. Like, I win. I win. You lose. <laughs> like, I win. And to the girls that's gonna tell me like, don't stalk him, don't look, I can't help it. Like, it, I can't. I don't know who I dated. It's okay, fine. You have the worst sex. You win. Okay, great. Congratulations if that's what you're after. But you are the one stalking him. So maybe it's safe to assume that he has the worst sex. Maybe I'm wrong on this one. I don't think stalkers are the most sane in the head people. 
once a man sleeps with a hundred different women, some of them married, some unmarried, all age groups, and he sees what how easy it was, the easier it is for him, the worse it gets over time. And also typically men that do this are already seeking something. There's already a void that they're trying to fulfill. So they're already starting out in the negative, just like the women that do this. So they're not the healthiest people. They're already starting out at a negative. Then they go trying to fill this void and they have all of these empty interactions over and over and over again. And yes, they take that energy and they can build confidence and money and they're driving nice cars and wearing nice suits and having nice watches, but something inside is eroded. It still feels empty. And then when finally they wake up into the king phase and they want to get married and provide for a woman, they can't trust women because they remember all the married women, all of the single women, all of the college women, all of the nice women, all of the feminine women, all of the masculine women, all of the boss, all the different types of women that they slept with. And they're like, I, there's, there's no one I can trust. They don't even know how to have the kind of physical intimacy that human beings and spiritual beings seek at their core because while they were all busy doing all these shenanigans, they never had time to build actual deep human emotional connection. Because if they knew how to do that, they wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. Yes, and I don't know about you, but I feel sorry for those guys. Especially when you said they drive the expensive cars, they wear the expensive suits, they wear the expensive watches. I almost burst into tears. This may be hard to believe, but maybe they're not looking for that emotional connection. Maybe they're doing what they wanted to do their entire life. Maybe that's what they always wanted. Is hookup culture detrimental to men? Maybe. But I don't think those are the men that suffer. It's probably more detrimental to those men that are looking for solid relationships. Those men that are looking for marriage. The F-boys you're talking about, I really don't think they're the ones looking for emotional connections. In your heart to heart, who do you think hookup culture is more detrimental to? Those men that you're talking about or a single mother of three with four baby daddies that can only afford groceries when the food stamps are coming in. It's kind of a no-brainer if you ask me. After two hours of waiting for him to text me back, um... I'm currently going out with somebody else. <laughs> so after one hour, I texted back somebody who, you know, wanted to take me out. And I was like, you know what? When one won't, another will. So anyways, his loss. His loss, maybe, but that's up for debate, isn't it? All I can say is I'm happy that I finally found one that is showing us her worth and her value. What you should do now, princess, is tell that guy that you're going out with that he is the second option. See how fast that turns into his loss. I know I've said earlier that we enjoy the easy stuff every now and again, but I didn't mean that easy. Somebody asked me, what do I want for Christmas? And all I want for Christmas is for my soulmate to come and find me. Come and get me, please. Come pick me up, cause it's ghetto here and I'm ready for you, sir. I'm ready for you, I'm ready to spoil you, I'm ready to love you, I'm ready to take care of you and vice versa. That's what I want for Christmas, a husband. Well, best of luck to you. I hope you get one. But you know, less than a week until Christmas, your chances on finding him, they don't look that good. Maybe for next Christmas, start making that wish since January. I've seen a few of your videos and I have to admit you're more than decent into those videos. You're also easy on the eyes, so whatever issues you have on finding a man, whatever standards, worth and value you think you need to lower, maybe work on that and work on those issues. I don't know who needs to hear this, and unfortunately I say this from personal experience, but if you're always making jokes that your boyfriend doesn't like you very much, bestie, he probably doesn't, and you should probably break up with him. Or they should probably not. Just because you speak from your own experience doesn't mean that they should break up with their boyfriend. Every situation is different. And whatever happened to you, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna happen to someone else. Just because you don't like being single, especially this time of year, doesn't mean you should have someone else join the club. But then again, if they come on TikTok looking for advice, and if they're gonna follow your advice, in that case, maybe they deserve to join the club. Maybe you can all get together, have a Christmas party, and cry on each other's shoulder how lonely you are.
Does anyone else ever notice how the main ones who scream about women being ran through are the same ones who have six kids with four different women that they don't take care of, have never been married, never exhibited any signs of discipline whatsoever, and actively avoid being employed so that they don't have to pay child support? Or is that just me? No, it's just you. I'm none of the things you've said, and I can easily say, yeah, you've been run through. I don't know what gave you the idea that your shaming tactic will work on me whenever you feel ashamed that you've been run through, but it never worked before, and it's not gonna work now. And if you don't feel ashamed of what you are, then be the best you can be. Obviously, the best you can be is run through, but still, be proud of who you are. Own it. Anyway, this is gonna be the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you in the next one.